All right. Hello, everybody. Hope you're all doing well today. Uh, my name is Zachary Hardwick. I'm a senior here at Vanguard, and I'm a history and political science major. Yeah, my name is Aaron Lima. I am a sophomore here. I'm also a history and political science major. Hey, great. So the movie this week we've watched and we're going to be discussing is uh, Train to Busan. This movie was released in 2016 and is actually underrated. <laughs> uh, the runtime of the movie is 118 minutes, and the genre is action slash horror slash thriller. Is direct, the director of the film is Yeon Song Ho, and some of the primary casts in the movie is Gong Yo, Jong Mu Yap Yu Mai, Ma Dong Siok, or Don Lee is his Hollywood American name, Kim Su An, and Choi Wu Shik. The writers of the movie is uh, Park Jo Suk and Yeon Sang Ho, who is also the director of the film. And the production is by Next Entertainment World. The budget of the film is pretty low, actually. It's eight, actually, that might be a typo. Eight point five billion, and then the box office is eighty point five million USD domestically in South Korea and international of ninety eight point five million dollars. It had forty two nominations for awards and won thirty six of them, so it's pretty well received and praised in the film. Yeah, and uh, obviously, Train to Busan focuses a lot on uh, media misinformation and corporate greed and uh, incident that parallels the events of the movie is the Seawall Ferry incident, which we also discussed during the Titanic movie. But during this incident, um, around 350 to 400 uh, passengers were on the ferry. And when the ferry sank, the media uh, had a statement that everyone survived, when in fact only the workers survived and the, the captain of the ship. And the captain was actually the first one to, to flee off board leaving all the passengers to die and 350 people died and 250 of them were children and teenagers and um and the cause of the the ferry incident was due to uh, cargo overload and you know they they due to corporate greed they allowed too many passengers to to board the ferry when there was supposed to be a minimum and there was illegal ship renovations and of course the captain was the first to leave the ship which uh, uh, leave a lot of a lot of people stranded there, not knowing what to do. And as we all know, a lot of the the people on board were told to stay there. And people criticized the the schools teaching younger kids that um, to to remain passive and listen to authority figures rather than listening to their own interests in in those types of situations. And another big uh, uh, big part of this was during. During the whole incident, the president uh, location was unknown, and it's still known to this day. The president was Park Yun Hae, and um, and and this ties into the movie where you know a lot of like a lot of the government seemed to be you know out of it in a way, and left a lot of people and the media reporting reporting false information, and and we saw as the corporate leaders were taking charge rather than. I like letting a lot of people have their voices. And um, so the movie had really good reviews. Um, one fifth of South Korea's population has seen the movie when it came out, which is a lot. That's around 11 million people. And um, and Train to Strong has become one of the best international horror films. I myself am like a huge fan of horror movies. And I looked up best international horror movie when I was into it. And Train to Strong is the first one that pops up. So it's huge. Here in the United States, and uh, and this movie became a huge success because of uh, it's in the classical horror monster like Godzilla minus one from your classical horror monster, and it makes layered characters and good plot and has has good themes in it, which makes the movie successful. Yeah, so the response to the film it was uh, widely and greatly praised. Like many people saying it's like one of the best zombie movies they've ever seen. Like other people who directed zombie films even just are baffled by the success and the just the overall feeling of the film kind of it betrays um on rotten tomatoes it has like a staggering 94 percent but if you guys are familiar familiar with rotten tomatoes it's pretty high overall with the average score being a 7.6 which is also pretty high and in praise as well although many do kind of notice the similarities to other zombie films like i know brad pitt's wolf War z 
the kind of American counterpart in a way is also very similar as far as the style of zombies and the kind of the apocalyptic scenery, which is interesting. Uh, as well as this kind of being a major breakout role for a lot of um, South Korean actors and actresses. Um, one in particular who I mentioned earlier is uh, Don Lee. Um, he played kind of the, the buff kind of guy with the, uh, who was the husband to the uh, his wife who was, had a baby or was pregnant. And um, he actually, kind of, that was his breakout role and he actually landed a pretty great role in the Marvel movies, The Eternals, and he played uh, Gilgamesh. I don't, I've never seen the movie personally yet, but I'd like to one day. And um, what was your overall opinion of the movie, Aaron? Yeah, I, I love this movie. I've seen it uh, in the past week, like three times. They were, uh, I saw it with my friends and then in class, and then I watched it again, because it was, it was such a good movie. And uh, yeah, I, I personally love the movie. I, I loved how the first time I saw it, I was like, oh, this is a cool zombie movie. And then like the third time I watched it, I'm like, wow, there's so many things in here that I didn't notice the first time. So. Yeah, I mean, after watching this class initially, I went back into my roommate, so my, we got to watch the movie ASAP. <laughs> so we all sat down, popped some popcorn, we all watched Train to Busan, and they, they loved it. They're like, I had no idea a movie like this could just be so like heartwarming, but yet like intense and violent, but just had a lot of hidden elements too, which we, which we all loved. So yeah, so going right into the first question here, if, if anyone just wants to pop in, we'll just go around the circle here, but um, would you be able to survive a zombie apocalypse? <laughs> <laughs> you want to start, Dr. King? <laughs> Me? Oh my goodness. Um, I think I would only survive if I had my husband with me because he <laughs> is like military trained and he's so smart. So I think I would stick really close by him because I think if I was left to fend on my own, um, yeah, I think it would just be a matter of time. But to actually be one of the few to survive, I think I would stick close to. Uh, my husband and I would, I would, I don't know, with my kids, like I would, we would just be a unit together. I, I can't imagine, you know, splitting up the family at all. Like if something bad were to happen, like it, I don't know, it just, uh, <laughs> it would be our one unit together. We would have to survive together. Um, I think I would survive for a pretty long, long while, but I wouldn't make it to the end. <laughs> I think I, think I would survive for like. To like the main part, like with the with the high schoolers in the movie, like I think I'm into that. Oh, that's not that. Bad. <laughs> like something would happen to me. Yeah. Alone, I would say no. <laughs> it would be like kind of a problem to go, but I really kind of picked that up on what you said. I was like, I would stick really close to my family. Like my dad is like a legend, so I'm like, I would mm -hmm. stay really close to him and just over the best. I don't think I want to show that. <laughs> really early before like seeing family and friends go on. Like I don't want to be like maybe first out so I don't really know what's happening. <laughs> um I don't know. I think I definitely wouldn't survive alone so um I probably better go like maybe into the like wilderness mm, and yeah. escape like society. But again I'd probably stick with my military boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to say I'd survive. I watch a lot of movies. <laughs> well, I, mean, I, like, I like watching survivor things and stuff, so I'd like to say I could survive. Yeah, I would, I would agree. I think I'd have a good shot, a good run at it, but similar to what you were saying, I don't think I would want to really last very long if it was just going to, everyone was kind of just going to die out. <laughs> I'd survive. <laughs> as, as long as like I didn't have any kids to take care of, like, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't go back in there. Like, I wouldn't be able to go back in there like the guy did in the movie and save his kid. <laughs> if I had no kids, nothing to take care of. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I think it depends on what the kind of zombies. Like, if it's the last of us zombies, oh. like the clickers, no. Oh, oh, yeah. But um, I feel like it also depends on where I start. Like, if I'm at my house or my apartment, then yeah, I'd, ride. I'd stay there and I'd survive as long as I can. But if we run out, I'm gone. <laughs> I would also like to say I would survive, but I know I would not. Like the second that like this is gonna sound so white girl, but the second that like Starbucks closes out, coffee shop closes down, how would it? Um, I would say yeah, maybe for like 
just how Zoe said, you know, I just feel like at the beginning it would be fine, like I'll be okay as long as like I have my big dog playing good next to me. <laughs> but maybe if like knowing one of them is just very playful with feet, I feel like that would be the end for me. Oh, um, I'll try, <laughs> but I don't think so. I mean, I'll survive for as long as I can, and then try to hide a little bit, and then I'll probably like. Um, and, um, I don't know. <laughs> I really put for like three minutes. It just depends on like what kind of fun. If it's World War Z, I'm the first one on. <laughs> but like Walking Dead, like color slow and yeah, one percent. <laughs> I'd say at the start it'd probably be 50 50, uh, but as soon as I could survive that like initial outbreak and find somewhere. I think I'd be good just with like, don't go out in the dark, don't be like all of the bad or movie decisions. You know? <laughs> I think I would. I think like the movie, a lot of times they wait a couple seconds before running. <laughs> Look at the box. <laughs> I think I'd just run right away. Run your way. <laughs> yeah, I play a lot of boxes. Let's see what happens. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, I'm just going to find a little item in the woods, cut off all my light and leave. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would say um I don't know if I would survive, but my strategy would be like have my like if I'm back home and be my family and if I was here be like some friends and just like pack up a car and some other food, like supply their drive out as far as you possibly can to the middle of nowhere until the gas runs out and then just like try to fend them off, I guess. Because why would them go that far? True. True. I I feel like I've been fighting a zombie apocalypse since I was like ten. <laughs> I like I know like if I if I if it was a zombie apocalypse, I would take like my friends and family to like my church because then there's like a field there we can grow plants. I got to this all out, but I think I would die because I like I think I would like try to like save my families or my friends and I'm like something. Sacrifice. Wow. I, I think I would I do pretty good. Um, I just really depends on like the scenario, like where I am. If I'm like in like a big metropolis or something with a lot of people, mm -hmm. I feel like it's hard to, to survive than being like the like, wilderness, you know, because it's more densely populated. But it would just be like all that better for it. I don't know. It'd be interesting. <laughs> all right. Going on to our next question. I thought this would be cool. How can we contrast Train of Busan from zombie movies in the United States? Such as World War Z, Last of Us, and other things like that. What made Train to Busan so successful? I think what made Train to Busan so, so successful is the people in it. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like this wasn't a zombie movie as much as it was a people movie that just happened to have zombies. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like it like those relations, like the same way I put you said about the new Godzilla movie, it's like it was more about the people than it was about the zombies. And I think that that's kind of what made it compelling and like made you connect to it. Mm -hmm. I think also, Realized it's a it was a big deal that they don't really do zombie movies. It's not really part of the culture in South Korea, so that could be another reason why it blew up so big. That's not really something new to them, mm -hmm. so they might have been more interested in it. I think it did so well because the uh, the selflessness displayed in that movie. Mm -hmm. uh, There's like those those guys risked their lives for their families, you know, and I mean they died eventually. So and the selflessness on um, display in the movie was definitely like a big point. Mm -hmm. So. I think what made the movie interesting is that it all took like most of the movie took place just on the train. And then that just like made it a lot more like it like it was like over an hour just in one setting. And so then because of that, they, they got super creative with like all the different plot points in the drama of the characters. And the, the train is called KTX, and I would regularly ride the KTX uh, train and the railway right down from Seoul to Busan mm -hmm. and back up because my in laws were living in Seoul. And I was living in Busan. My husband was finishing off schooling in, in Busan. So I would regularly ride that that train. Mm -hmm. that, that train is so <laughs> real. It, it has to go there to, to ride the KTX train later if you ever go to visit. Is that what the train looks like? Yes, yes. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> I feel like part of the reason it also was so successful, again, was all these themes. Like you mentioned, uh, it's a Korean film. Like, there's so many iconic Korean places. You have the trains, you have just the connection to the Seoul incident from a few years prior. There's just a lot of, like, I guess, themes that resonate with Koreans because it's a very Korean song movie. 
something I also thought was interesting about this movie is we didn't follow like the people that were trying to like kill all the zombies, like find a cure. We thought like followed the storyline because like these random guys that were trying to survive. And so I thought that was something that was different. I feel like only, like to my knowledge, not knowledge, like a lot of like zombie movies in America is like trying to find the cure to the zombies, like trying to save the world. And this was like they weren't focused on the world as much as they were just like focused on trying to like, get like him and his kid out. And I think that was like a big difference. Too. Yeah, yeah, like in the last of us, um, the girl was like the answer to everything. So I thought it was interesting they didn't use the little girl as like, oh, she's like, you know, the cure to everything kind of thing. It's like they're focusing on the father daughter relationship, and there was so much stake. Um, and in the end, like, I feel like if America could have faced the father and the daughter would survive, and then the pregnant woman would be the one to, you know. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that's something that was, I noticed that was really good. I found that it was like a big heartwarming film a lot. And it's about, a lot of American films is focused a lot on like special effects and stuff too. So there's more explosions and stuff. And although there was a decent amount of special effects, I felt like this film centered around like love and everything a lot more than the more action blowing up stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I thought the same way as Asher, um, because I also like to watch like the Marvel movies and everything like that. But when it came to like the dad like getting bit and turning and like I thought like all of his memories, like I thought like when he was turning, it was like such a slow process, like, oh wait, he's not gonna turn. It's just, like he's cured, like uh, like how they were saying, like how the most American movies, like you're trying to find the cure. So that's what like, my brain I was like, oh maybe it's like, oh no, he's just gonna be cured, like he can like fine. Then he actually turns into like I don't know. That's super upsetting. <laughs> so I was like, it's like so many different, like from American movies and not actually from, like, from Korean. Like, I thought, it was, like, you're just so fun through the characters. Like, they're not just trying to find cure, like, they don't care about that. They're just trying to survive and just get to this area. And I thought his sacrifice was really interesting too because it's such a slow process <laughs> and it wasn't dramatic. And it was more emotional than anything. Is I feel like in American movies, um, it's like very dramatic, like he's like screaming and like you know convulsing and everything. But you, it was like very slow and like you're kind of going through the journey of him turning to the doctor with him, mm -hmm. and then like you know his sacrifice. That's kind of like the the guy who well, like the bad guy of it who was zombie but didn't realize it. Um, mm -hmm. near the end, I mean, he was still asking like. Was he saying like kidney home or something? Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, I would go through with that whole <laughs> But yeah, I think the film was just so emotionally provoking. It was <laughs> crazy. So I think it was also interesting. I like wrote it down. I think Aaron had said that one fifth of the population had been in movie after its initial release. And I think that just goes to show like how successful it truly really was after the initial release. And I think it comes from the fact that, like you were saying, like the South Korean film industry is not as like, I guess, big obviously as the United States. So they don't really have as many options to be like, oh, I like this zombie movie better than this one. Like this was their entryway into, I guess, that sort of genre. And I think that it came with like a sense of pride that they had their own movie where they felt represented and their morals felt represented. Because like you guys said, it's more like looking at the heartwarming relationships rather than for yourself and kill off. I, I remember reading an article together and it was talking about how like South Korea, like world culture has like a morality issue. So I feel like this movie addressing like people with like a good moral compass would like, you know, obviously like a lot of people would, would like would like watching that, but I feel like it made it successful. All right, going on to the next question here. Uh, just a little bit of background on this question. It talks about the Korean War and kind of the uh, issue between like North Korea and South Korea. I know me myself, I took a South Korean or Korean class last semester. Dr. Kang here. We talked a lot about the separation of North and South Korea and kind of like the ideological issues and differences between like more of like a democratic approach to the South and more of like a authoritarian North. So just kind of knowing that and knowing that the uh, there's war and broke out differences. In the 1950, last time in 1953, a lot of uh, dead end up being separated uh, at a ceasefire that still continues today. Never, the war actually has never ended yet, but knowing that and kind of like the connection of the like the whole peninsula and what, what they went through, the next question is uh, 
not only the context of the Korean War and the divide of North and South. Um, there's a final scene in the movie where they're walking through the train tunnel, reflecting kind of like some sort of sentiment towards the South, Korea's neighbor to the North, and the refugees trying to get through from North and South. It definitely like the setup of the scene, like does remind you of like a demilitarized zone. Um, the like in terms of refugees, it's interesting because they don't actually like, cross that to go around, but there's so few of them that are able to manage it to go from I think it's China to Mongolia or China to down to uh, like Laos or down. Mm -hmm. But just the, the sheer few numbers and the uh, casualties and bigger along the way. I feel like it's really reflective of the people that were lost throughout the movie, you know, sacrificing themselves to get their family across. Okay, well, um, the next question is regarding this. How does the movie reflect corporate work culture in South Korea, and can it be compared to work culture here in America? And to give a little context, I know that right now, I think most men work around like 40 hour weeks and they're working and bringing it's like 62 hour weeks. Yeah. In South Korea? Yeah. So, wow. Yeah, I mean, before that, like, I didn't know anything about like what would work, work, work culture in South Korea, but like, you can tell like just from the relationship he had with his daughter and stuff, like he's very much a workaholic. And I think that is very much like a theme in like American films as well. And it's, like, very, I think that it is a like a common trope to have like the dad that like, works too much and like doesn't talk to his kids enough. And so I mean I think that was something that was very much like he didn't even something that like really stuck with me was like he didn't even know that his daughter already had a beat but he like bought her a beat. Sure. And like and that was just so sad like to watch because like he tried to like Get her something that she would want. Like, that's like a pretty expensive gift, and she's already had one. And so, like, I think like just that in itself is kind of like very like showing up that. So, I think that is very similar to American culture. Like, if it's going up to 62, like, I know in America they're trying to push it like to four day work weeks, and if that's ever going to happen, like, that's what it pushes right now. But I feel like their South Korea might be pushing one way, where America's trying to push the other way. Yeah, and I think having a parent um, in the corporate world, like their life revolves around the work uh, most of the time, like going on business trips and stuff like that. And um, like you barely see your parents, like ever. And so I think that was uh, really reflected in the movie. Like, definitely, like the parent tried their best to get to know their child, but not having the time to do that while also maintaining a certain lifestyle for their kids. So, yeah. I think, I think we're culture here in America, it's kind of family focused as well, more so than South Korea. I thought it was really interesting to see that um, Dong Lee and Hong Yu, uh, the father, had a little moment in the bathroom where normally people would say, hey, why were you there for your child? It wasn't chastising um, the, the father, but uh, Dong Lee, the, the character, um, was found with, was saying, hey, you were doing your best. You're, you're a good father. Like, you know, we don't get enough credit as dads. Um, so I thought that was an interesting message to hear. And another thing I just want to add is a lot of uh, South Korean parents are, are divided. Uh, South Korean families are divided because um, if the father makes enough money, they want to provide for their children. So they send their children and their wife to study in the United States. So um, the, the, the mother and the children come to the United States they go to school here, and the father sends all their money um, to fund their uh, living expenses in the United States. And so um, you have that element of self-sacrifice and sacrifice that the fathers make, and you know a lot of it hits a lot of it impacts a lot of uh, South Korean families. I thought that part was really cool too, because a lot of American films you see when they're talking about like the dads and stuff, they criticize dads yeah. for almost taking their work, but it's like the this film almost show that the dads are making a big sacrifice, but they're doing it for the better of the kid's life. And that's what the guy said. It's like, she'll appreciate you when she's older and stuff. She'll know the work that you did. And that's not really reflected a lot in American films. And I think it should be. Yeah, to, to your point, it's funny you mentioned that, because I feel like in American films, 
back to the dad figure is always like out going to doing something, you know, <laughs> not being actively you know, like to follow around like his children. But interesting in the movie, like it almost like takes pride in his effort and like he's you know he's not a perfect father, but he's trying to like, rebuild the relationship with his daughter. And it's really tender, you know, like uh even like shows how much he works and he's like stressed out, but throughout all that, he's just trying to get his daughter what she wants to go see her mother, Usa, which is just really heartfelt. But I mean, the whole dynamic is really, really emotional. Yeah, but well, also the whole idea that like the whole song that she sang, like the reason she couldn't finish in class is because he, she wrote it, she said, started singing for him and he wasn't there. And it's like, that was, that's kind of like a crazy concept that came full circle at the end. <laughs> and when, I don't want to bring it up because I don't want to again, bring more tears. That was, <laughs> that was you said, like, like creates like a full circle moment, but also like it shows how like, even though he's like not doing great in the whole like, going back and forth between hope and work, like he's like, his daughter still like appreciates him, like still loves him. So that was something that was super interesting about. Yeah, I think similar to what Asher said, it was, Interesting that that song is what truly saved them at the end because they had the scope zoomed in and they were like, oh, we'll shoot them. We don't know if they're infected or not. But that song is what let the military people know that they weren't infected. So I think that that full circle moment uh, kind of shows that the South Korean film took a different approach to this corporate lifestyle and kind of showed that it was a sacrifice the father was making rather a choice or like not a choice to, I guess, neglect his child. And the choice of the song was interesting too. It wasn't a South Korean song. It was a Hawaiian song. Yeah. 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 I uh, I also found it interesting how uh, as we were all saying how like I feel like the cliche dads and like American culture is like sitting on like a lazy boy and watching TV, just completely uninvolved in like their parent, their children's life, but like it's like it's like their choice. You know what I mean? Where like in this movie, it's like he he's working so hard that he, he literally can't be involved in this child's life. Um and and yeah, I just I just found that comparison like a little funny. You know what I mean? Like that's the cliche dad in our Hollywood. So you know. I found like the film that compared it. I'm guessing Click with like Adam Sandler. Oh, right, yeah. So he's like yeah. working so hard that his family actually like hates him in the end for it. But I felt like there's a very big like difference complete compared to that compared to this film because they're saying it's gonna work out in this film because of him working hard. But in the American film, he was working so hard to get more money and get better pay that his kids actually hated him. So I feel like there's a little bit of contrast there too. Same thing in health. That's what I've been thinking about. And that scene always kind of annoyed me though, where you're like, if you step out of this meeting, you'll leave your job. And then he does because his son wants him, but I was like, okay, now your son doesn't isn't gonna like have like a dad with a dog. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, 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 oh, you're thinking all the way. Yeah, but all right. So next question here. Now the film depicts various elements of class warfare. Uh, does one status entitle them to quote throw one through the wolves? Hypothetically, should the rules of society apply in this kind of zombie apocalyptic setting? Ooh. <laughs> On one part of his job, it's kind of not the zombie part, but he was antagonized earlier on in the film for his job, and they said, I don't know if he's a bail bondsman, or he's in, like, I'm sure they like, yeah, well, they talked about how he like, uh, took advantage of poor people. Mm -hmm. I feel like that was one of the bigger, uh, like, economic takeaways I took from the movie. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and then, like, economically, the, like, COO guy of the whole train, I felt like he was entitled to because about everyone else and just, like, stomp on everyone. I cannot stand that guy. Because yeah. in the movie. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that it goes into the like the whole thing I was thinking about is like everyone like is treating him with respect because he's rich. Like all like the conductor and everyone that works for the train is like trying to like treat him with respect so that they can like get in good with him. But at the end of the day, like when the whole world's crashing down, that guy probably doesn't even have a job anymore. So they're all just people, like they should be equal. And so I think that he did have like a false sense of like self-entitlement where it wasn't exactly deserved mm -hmm. because it's like the whole, like in, in this fictional world, like the entire world was crashing down. So why does it matter if at one point you were, you know, a rich like CEO could be because now all you are is just another person on the train, so. I would agree when you like strip the materialistic status and like your economic status away from a person, it's like you're the same, so you shouldn't really have like an advantage above. And that makes me think of the movie The Purge. It's like mm -hmm. it's a siren goes off, like no one cares who you are. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think it was kind of similar in this as well. 
I think even factors are clearly kind of a flip because at one point he is the CEO, but he's also uh, elderly or more elderly than mm -hmm. the others. And so that point where you are at one point one of the most important people in the room, the next point you're now a liability mm -hmm. because your your age will probably slow you down, make it easier for yeah. you to end up getting bitten or something. So now you're kind of the least important person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that was really interesting that he was antagonizing the father, I forgot his name. And then at the end, he was like begging him for help, like, mm -hmm. please take me home, please take me back to my mother. And like, it's like you see him like first at like such a high status, and like everyone is crowding around to get in his good graces. And then in the end, he's the one begging someone he antagonized for his good grace. And then, yeah. It's crazy. Oh, I'm sorry, you give us that. The style of the film in general reminded me of like the old rating system where people could do bad things. They were just going to get punished in the end. Yeah, they yeah. were going to get punished in the end for it. Yeah, I, I feel like people, like, like the, the movie, by definitely emphasized to see with the main character going full circle. Like, he, like, I remember when the homeless man uh, kind of fell. Like, he would have left that homeless man at the beginning of the movie, but he went back to help him, mm -hmm. mainly because of his daughter. But I feel like I feel like the movie definitely like emphasized that kind of like like you're gonna be remembered for helping someone rather than helping yourself. You know what I mean? Well, I ended up helping this guy as a guy that ended up saving his yeah, daughter. Yeah, yeah. 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 What I don't understand is how people like still went for the money type of stuff, because at the end of a zombie a zombie apocalypse, money's not gonna really mean anything at all. It's just going to be who can get stuff, so it should be survival of the fitness. Like, it's an old habit to die hard on that one. Exactly. Look, so you should think that it'd be like more like the athletes that they're kind of like looking up to, or somebody somebody that's like fit instead of like some like big business guy and stuff. Yeah, it's just like interesting how once like money is stripped away in like our modern system, it goes back to basically survival of the fittest, how it was for so many years. And, yeah. <clears throat> Okay, um, the next question we have is How are women portrayed in a movie mm. compared to some American films we have seen? <laughs> Very helpless. Yeah, like, I was going to say, I was going to say they seemed really helpless in that movie where, like, they had the pregnant woman who couldn't do anything mm -hmm. and, like, <laughs> she was pregnant, like, rightfully so. But, like, also, the, uh, like, they couldn't help themselves. They had to have, like, men go help them mm -hmm. for her. Yeah. yeah, I think it was interesting, like, that how. The first person we see with the actual virus is a woman. And she had walked in the train and she kind of spreads it on. But it's interesting how they decided to give her the role of being the one to spread the virus from like, I was like the deer or something the first scene. That's also an interesting point. Um, something that like, I agree completely that like, most of the women seem helpless. Like I wrote that down in my notes. But something that I also think of is they were all helpless except for that one old woman that mm -hmm. opened the train. <laughs> Like thirty people, and I don't even know where that fits in. That was just crazy. I, I feel like that was trying to portray women as just like completely like emotion driven, like no logic. Just like oh, like I need to see my friend. I'm just gonna open the store and like that. I, mean, I was right there with her on that one. Like, that was a good move, but as so. I actually have some some piece of a uh, piece of an article about kind of um, older people in South Korea that says pe uh, pensioners from South Korea live in poverty. 25% below them in 10 years, the suicide rate amongst retires has doubled. Mm -hmm. All to surveys by the OECD, the rapid industrialization of South Korea has exploded their population. So I just thought like the old, the older ladies, like especially focusing on that, like, you know, she 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 I felt like that kind of highlighted why she, you know, and why she did it. She's older and that's how they that's how they were treat they're treated, you know. So yeah, I just thought that was interesting. When I didn't know and then they were sisters. Oh, so yeah. Yeah. I thought she was like yeah. mad or something, so that's why she opened it, mm. seeking her own form of justice. But I think it, it was it was what I was trying to say, like um, at the beginning, where I said my family has to stick together because if my if my kids were taken away from me, I'd be like, there's no reason to live. <laughs> like for her, this this younger sister saw that her older sister turned into a zombie so for her she had no purpose of living anymore she's like you know what like these these people are so corrupt i hate these people and i can't just open the door yeah. oh sorry sorry i think it was really interesting to like while they're uh when we got to the car uh carpeting or where everyone else was she was so quiet and like was just watching mm -hmm. and i was like that was 
And like then she did this one, she wasn't even talking, she just was watching and how everyone was like commotion and then they got, they pushed the other people to the next car and they were so commotion and they were, I thought I was so mad of how they were wrapping the door, like, except for the door for the zombie. I was getting so mad, like you guys are idiots. And there's the other door, I'm like, you guys deserve it, you guys are so <laughs> like, I agree, I would like to say these things for me. I was like, they, people that were clearly not zombies, mm -hmm. they secured the door out of versus the people that, War zombies. Like, yeah. What got me is that if these people were supposedly going to turn into zombies, why corner yourself? Because now you have zombies on both sides. Yeah. 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 Well, a lot of the women too were like were sitting down too. Like all the guys were standing up and doing the action while they were. I, maybe the women were instructed to sit down. I don't know, but. Yeah, I just thought that was interesting. I kind of saw the portrayal of women in a different way. I saw that the pregnant woman and daughter were actually the ones who wanted to save people. They were more kids, mm -hmm. right? and the husbands were kind of self-centered, and then daughter and pregnant woman were kind of bringing their husband back to kind of like uh, you know, care for the people. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the daughter kept making me so happy because they were going to live, and she kept doing something stupid, and now almost died. But like, that's very true. Like, the only reason that like, like she saved so many more people, I mean, they ended up dying, but... Yeah. She like, had way more of a heart than the dad, like right? the dad's children. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's also a portrayal of like, you know, gender like empathy wise. You know, like uh, they portrayed women as like more caring people in that movie, mm -hmm. whereas like the men were literally just there. I mean, the only reason they went back was to save their family, not to save like uh, just random people, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. I feel like that's more of like a thing where like the men weren't really portrayed as emotional people mm -hmm. or like empathetic people, whereas mm -hmm. the women were. Really and I think that even the scene with the girlfriend on the phone trying to like get the other people to come and they're like all yelling at her and they throw her phone on the ground and like are calling her like names so that like even though she was trying to help the other people there. No, no, no. It's a bad idea and like smash her phone. Mm -hmm. I thought it was interesting that one of the women survived in the end. Yeah. I don't know, because the men were so strong like, physically, but I feel like the women were really like the hearts of the movie, like after she had like they had kind of um they have more like empathy towards people that are agreed in that like a lot of people did survive as long as they don't have this they beg their husband or their dad to go save them. Yeah, I thought they were like really the uh, hearts and then the men were just kind of like this is getting awesome. Reminds me of the Titanic, the idea that like women and children in the boat first. Mm -hmm. Also see the kind of like a movie strategy because uh, you had a, a good death in the movie, and not that that was good, but you had it done in a way that the death is more important and more like on your mind than the actual ending of the movie, because mm -hmm. that character makes such a big uh, implication on it. And also, the thing is, uh, it might just be me, but in general, you know, I I don't think people like seeing women children yeah. die. I think so that, I know how it's so practical. Like, how yeah. are we gonna do that? Because like, yeah. 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 so, like, so the it, little girl, like, they kill off the little girl, and it's so sad. I was surprised the teenage girl died. Honestly, I had a yeah. I was sad when that happened. I think the part that kind of annoyed me with like the woman being portrayed as helpless was just that one part when they're like, like near the end, it was just the pregnant woman and then the dad and the daughter on the train and then like the evil guy was trying to bite him. And then she was kind of just like standing there. <laughs> but, and I was like, oh my God, just like help a little bit. Like, <laughs> you, with, she could like help push him off the train, they all just survive. It's like, okay, like, I know you're pregnant, but you could like kick him or something. She but she didn't end up being too long. Yeah. She didn't end up being way too long. Yeah, I was really annoyed because she had a curse. <laughs> I, I said, 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 I thought it was different from a lot of like films nowadays. Maybe not so much as like an American, but like nowadays, there's always a woman action figure mm -hmm. or like person that's like able to fight and stuff. So like, I mean, kind of shows back to like movies back then. It was a lot of male-driven people that can fight and everything. But now you see movie, you have like like Black Widow and Marvel and stuff like stuff like that, where a girl can fight too. And another thing I saw in this movie too is like. The kind of like the how we talked about like the father sacrifice on like a big comparison is a quiet place. Like I saw the parallels in that movie with this one too, like how about the sacrifice at the end to save the children, but yeah. That was interesting.
Do you like the fact that it's the father, the husband, the boyfriend that are the heroes and the rescuers? Mm -hmm. It's very gendered, right, in terms of who are the heroes. Is that kind of like South Korean culture, though, in a, in a way? Even more just so, like, I don't know, I feel like a lot of East Asian countries who have like more like social parameter, like the roles of men, males versus females, that like a, that's a thing here. Yeah, no, it's hard to say. I think I would argue that American culture was that for a long time too, but it's only recent where you have a lot of women who you know reject that sort of idea. I, I kind of saw it as uh, kind of realistic. Yeah, with uh, just just who the characters were. Because you had a teenage girl, you had a very young girl, and you had a pregnant. And except for the teenage girl, which she couldn't do much even as a teenage girl, uh, and then you have two that are not nearly physically as adept as even uh, like the old, older men that were blocking the car. So against all the zombies and everything there, I, I agree that the, with the character that the safest way to do was just to stay there and hope someone comes. Yeah, I mean, I think it would have been a lot less compelling and realistic if a pregnant woman came out and like threw her head with zombies and one at the end. I mean, I expect it made more sense in this way solely because of the character choice. Yeah. Do you think if we see that in a film that if something like a desperate situation were to happen, that we would, on a subconscious level, like mirror that and we would, you know, revert to our gender norms? Or is it, do you think it's instinctual? I think so. Yeah. I think it depends on the way you were kind of brought up. Mm -hmm. Just because, uh, for me, I'm assuming most of us in here, that it would be like we would go back and try and help people. Mm -hmm. uh, but, and then looking at the guy that we all hate, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it was first and foremost him and himself. And it was clear that when he said, take back my mother's house, that was the only kind of interaction he had. That was the most important person out there. He's now the most important person is him himself. So there's no, it kind of depends on what your background is and how you react to situations. All right, do you want a next question here? Um, after seeing the theme of sacrifice for selfishness in the film, do you think it would be possible for people today to put differences aside and work together, or would we let our individual tendencies hinder one's chance of survival? Well, it's worse nowadays. I feel like a lot of people look out for themselves a lot more nowadays than they would back then. Mm -hmm. So I thought everyone's pretty selfish. And Besides my family, or... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm to survive. <laughs> yeah, I would say that today there's an increased like obsession with your own status, like how people perceive you and what I guess people think of you, and um, so I think that it would be difficult to mix those like different groups, working class groups. Um, to have them work together just because some people can't let go of their own status mm -hmm. or pride in a sense. Yeah, I think too there's been like a big rise in like uh like social media status. Like, you know, having a big following gives you power now. You know what I mean? So I feel like if there was like a trendy persona in America, they'd probably be like an influencer that's trying to get out of them. Yeah, I think it's everyone for themselves right now. Like for me, I don't think I would go back and say those people as a kid because, um, yeah, I just, I can't do that. <laughs> I think it's really interesting, like, if it, hopefully, there's not a virus out there that would do it again, or do this. Um, but, like, I just think of, like, what people would go to is all the movies that we've all watched. Like, like uh, The Last of Us, what was the, I just think, like, People would, um, I don't this is how I would think of it. Like, people would just reform to those movies, like, what happened in those movies? Like, that's what happened to us. Like, either the survival or you're dead. Like, so, of course, like, of course, like, I think working together, obviously, to survival is like the right choice, but like, it re realistically, I don't think that would happen. Like, there are people are just going to be thinking of themselves and just, but they're also because they're terrified. 
and like that's a natural thing to feel and people just don't understand that sometimes and i feel like with the ceo even like with me like i hated him so much like he was so annoying but also like he just reacted as like he as he was would that's when he was like, terrified and like all he wanted to do was survive of course he wasn't doing it um probably could have done it a better way but like yeah I think it, you brought up the last of us. Um, mm -hmm. At first, like they tried to help each other, you know. Yeah. Like everyone was like trying to help, you know, each other survive. But at <clears> the <throat> end, like everything kind of went to hell, and um, everyone was like kind of surviving their own, like just a totally like normal human instinct. And I think like that's probably what happened. It's mm -hmm. like a real apocalypse happened. But I do think also there is like the innate knowledge that there is power. First. Mm -hmm. So I feel like both of those things would kind of go against each other too, where it's like I ran for himself, but also I'm safer if there's 10 people around me. So I feel like it would kind of kind of go between those two. But I think true at the end of the day, it is very much like if someone's chasing you, you don't you're not gonna have time to worry about the other people. It's very much wrong. Yeah, I I think like the this movie a lot because you know the corporate guy. But if you just work with the, the main characters, everyone could have survived. No one had to die. He basically killed like uh, six out of eight of the characters. And you know, people will do this thing. I mean, you see evidence of like the Siwa incident where the captain left the ship. He was the first one to leave when he could have saved so many children, children's lives, mm -hmm. but he left so like so quickly. And it just reflects with how people would, would react to the apocalypse today. Mm -hmm. did, did he also kind of indirectly kill them? Yeah, he didn't want them to go like yeah. under or to go on challenge. Yeah. yeah. Why would he do that? I, don't know. <laughs> I think what I think about is if there was obviously, but if there was a zombie apocalypse, I don't know if I'd be able to like trust a stranger, like because it's a completely different story being like trapped with like friends or family, and, like knowing that they're not out to get you or backstab you but like if you were hoping to find strength in numbers and those numbers were strangers like at what point would you take your own self-interest so there might be the scene from the film where the ceo and uh, one of the workers in the bathroom oh yeah and he's yeah. like hey the coast is clear yeah he pushes them out and kind of like yeah. feeds them the wolves but it's interesting like what you were saying that is like because it's hard to trust people Especially when all you think about is like your own survival, and like you need to make it sure that no matter what happens, that you were the one that comes out on top of everyone else. So it's very interesting. And you just uh, juxtapose that scene to the self sacrifice uh, mm -hmm. scene of uh, Don Lee mm -hmm. when he was like trying to close the door to the very end, um, trying to you know, sacrifice himself and the homeless guy when they were stuck with the, the train wreck. Um, and yeah, it, it, you just see just such a large contrast. And I have one quick question to our athletes in the room. There was a scene where they go, they open up the the, the next uh, car, the train car, and all his teammates turn into zombies, and they had to pass through. And he was paralyzed; he couldn't hit any of them with his baseball. But I was wondering, like, if that happened, like, if you saw your teammates who were zombies, like, what would you do? Would you be able to like hit them with a baseball bat? I would never hit you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love my teammates, but at that time, I know they probably want me to hit them too. <laughs> I would agree. It's, they're not in their like right mind, so it's, yeah. I think I would feel. It's not that much. I let Alex get me with the bat. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then I'm like, dude, it's a fire. I think like, to the degree there is an idea where it's like there could be a hero at some point. Mm -hmm. So you don't know like, if there ever will be. <laughs> I, I think that would go through my mind a little bit. I don't think it would stop me, but I feel like they would yeah. be like a kind of like, oh, what if they do come back? Also, you say that, but like, a like if that's like really hard to imagine. Like, it's, or especially if it's like a family member and you like see their face, you're just supposed to like smash in their head. <laughs> like, that's not like an easy thing. I think, uh, I think I would panic. Like, it's not, it's not them, but like, it's like still like, you would think, you would think about it and be like, oh, would this hurt you? <laughs> I would just keep, it, keep your eyes closed. <laughs> okay, um, on to our next question. We have, how does the movie portray South Korea's government, whether withholding information or being untrustworthy? One of my favorite quotes from the whole film was when the TV was playing and there's a newscast. And like, to the best of our knowledge, no one is in danger or something like that. And like, there's clips of people getting eaten the exact same factor. So just, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, obviously, I'm going to throw it again, but uh, the Seawall incident, the media reported that nothing happened. 
but 350 people are missing. So, you know, it's just like, you know, they're, they're reporting something, but there's something so drastic that is like missing. You know what I mean? I think it's, it's crazy. <laughs> But like in the Titanic, when the leadership um, doesn't tell the rest of the people, especially the third class passengers um, that try to get out, the, sink is, the, the ship is sinking. Like they just withhold the information to give everyone a chance to survive. Well, at that point, was it like giving them a chance to like not like trample each other? Or was it uh, uh, kind of, I, I thought the seawall one was more like a, they mistook it. Like that, it was uh, bad information. They took what was said and, and misapplied it instead of taking what was done and lying about it. I feel like with, with only information, kind of like a double edged sword. Because, in a way, they don't tell us certain things for a reason. I mean, if we were to be like, knowing that there'd be some kind of like, I don't know, there's so much that happens in our own government, we probably aren't are aware of probably for a good thing. Because if we knew, there'd be mass hysteria and people would be like, Rampaging or rioting, you know. So I mean, some of it, it's either it is it exists for a reason. I get that, but at the same time, in certain things like the CYS, I mean, it's kind of interesting because it wouldn't have to be like some amount of information they should be telling people. But it's interesting though because it takes, it takes too much. I mean, you get in trouble. If it takes little, you get in trouble. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, there's always two different options, or you have to pick what's the best option and which has the least amount of negatives. I mean, especially with like COVID and stuff too, like they like gradually got in there. You have people stealing a bunch of toilet paper and stuff. So people go, kind of go crazy if you do tell them a lot of information, but at the end of the day, you need to tell them to stay inside and stuff so you don't spread the sickness. So it's kind of like you have to pick which option you want to do. Yeah, I feel like there was no between in that scenario, right? Because if they just didn't tell people it was dead around, People get the virus and they die. Mm -hmm. But if not, they're like if they tell everybody, like everybody was packed, like with the toilet, it was great. Mm -hmm. So I I mean I'm gonna bring it back to like the corporate crush question, but uh, we see like at the beginning of the film how uh he was talking to a, a client who wanted to take out his shares because of like a, a leak or something, and he, he convinced him to, to not take out his shares because of corporate greed, and I feel like we see this today, even in like America. I know not not like the big scale, but even like Apple and Samsung, they're like they lie about like the batteries and stuff. So I feel like we see kind of corporate greed in, in that sense today compared to the movie. So I thought that was interesting. Okay, you know what it reminded me of? Do you remember when they like? He, he gets the call from his associate and the associate's like, it's all our fault. Yeah. He's like, don't worry, it's not. And then he turns and he has like blood on his hands from like killing people. And he like literally washes the blood off of his hands. And where it's like, oh, yeah. yes. I, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> I say that. But also, he's like, just tell me it's not my fault. And then he's like, it's not your fault. And then the guy hung up with him. Like, that's all he needs. You know? <laughs> it's like, he's had to get out one word and then he's fine. Yeah. So I miss that. So did his company like fund the company that released this virus? Like I, I don't know if like I, I I think that the main character was just like selling the shares for the okay. for the company. He, I, yeah, I don't think he he was just following what was like they said of me. Like yeah. right. Well, the next question here. What does the film explain about social structures? Are the fabrics of society the fabric of society and take during a month video type of and so basically what I'm trying to say here is that the fabric of society did like lead to a time of like mass hysteria, kind of what we talked about earlier, but like is during this time kind of like the list sort of mentioned, like do certain things lead more to like hysteria and panic? For example, in a movie, a lot of the movie has to deal with like panic. Can you think? If it were to be kind of organized differently, you think it would be a different turnout, basically. Like it was like, no, no one panic, you know. I think mean, I, I know, like for an example, I think of is when like there's like a fire drill. Everyone says line up in order. Like, are we supposed to follow the parameters of being in order, or should we all just like fend for ourselves? To be real, when we did those fire drills in high school, like we all knew that there was a fire. We're not doing that. Like, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, we're not all gonna line up in the classroom. Yeah, we're watching, we're watching the fire. Out. Like we're getting out of there. So, uh, I don't know. I guess that that would like go to say like. Yeah, sometimes people, you gotta take things into your own hands, you know. Well, just, uh, well there's another of, uh, do you guys remember the school shooting where somebody pulled a fire alarm and then went out on the field where everyone was not uh, out yeah. and to shoot them? So that kind of social structure then working against you. Mm -hmm. I guess doing this in situations like this. Yeah, and I think Zach kind of made a point in the context about, or maybe it was Aaron, but they brought up how schools are teaching kids to be passive mm -hmm. um, in times of crisis and how this, I guess, idea of like just tr putting trust in what you know and trust, <clears throat> I guess, the process in a time of crisis can be extremely dangerous. Like in that case, or I guess in this context, obviously, if we told everybody not to move, then everybody would have probably died on the train. So I think sometimes, in times of crisis, you do have to take things into your own hands and you kind of, you know, I guess, go by your flight. All the obedient teenagers are the ones that died who listened to the captain orders to stay inside the cabin on the ferry. And it was those who were disobedient that lived that said, no, I'm not going to stay in the cabin because ultimately it sunk so slowly that if everyone could have lived, but when it starts sinking, then people were trapped because of the pressure of the water, right? And so, um, are we, if do you think if we if I was in the sailor bear, I feel like I would have probably drowned and died because I am so obedient and I always follow the rules. I'm a I'm not a rule breaker, I, I'm a rule follower. And um I'm wondering, you know, would you would you have had the force that as a teenager to be like, no, I'm not gonna listen to the authorities, I'm not gonna listen to the instructions of the captain. And even when they were calling their parents, like I've seen this going on, there's an emergency, I don't know what's going on, and the parents are telling the kids. Just listen to the instructions that are given by your teachers. Just do what they say. Um, and I think I would have easily been one of the casualties there. But I'm just curious, like in that situation, would you have, like, would you have had the foresight, the wisdom to disobey when we are? Would we? Um, are we in our American system? Are we conditioning students to to engage in groupthink and not critical think, or to just follow? And to be like sheep and, and not, you know, question. I feel like in a scenario with the boat, probably definitely would have gone to the top of it. I don't think I'd stay at the bottom, regardless of it. until eventually that's just not smart in the first place. Because I mean, if you're drowning, the water comes in, you want to be above. Um, yeah, I feel like I would kind of know that. It's like one of those things that it's like super, it's like, 
what can you do as an authority factor? Because people will either listen to you or they won't listen to you. And obviously, you want everyone with what you say and everything. But yeah. Yeah. if there was really a fire and you were the RA, would you really help my RC versus going to the last one now? Yeah. Well, um, for me, um, <laughs> but, uh, no, I, like, I would because I I got really close with my residents mm -hmm. and I want to make sure they're all safe. Yeah. And also, it doesn't take that long to knock on everyone's door because, like, you're just like really walking really fast and just like banging on every everyone's door and just yelling like, "Yeah, like get on to go down to your spot." Like, yeah. yeah, what I think is crazy, even though the school is that there was two hours and thirty minutes on the road of Sandy, and not one person, not one, like the captain was the first one to go, so the crew is it's in their own hands now, and not one person thought, "Hey, let's go," you know inform like other people or, or anything you know what i mean there's two hours and 30 minutes of time where none of that happened so i, I just think that that's crazy i think to the idea of like uh like a group thing it's difficult to like encourage the youth and like young teens to question authority it's like your whole life like you've learned to like respect authority and respect like higher or older people in your life so I think it's kind of like what Zach was saying, like a double-edged sword. Like, do you tell your kids you need to be a critical thinker and challenge everything that these adults are telling you? Or do you tell them like, no, stay put and listen? Um, and it kind of makes me think, there was like this one quote that people were going around saying of like, it's older adults first time living too. So like we're living the same, I guess, first time. Obviously they have more experience, but like that quote always resonated with me like, oh, like, it's my mom's first time living too, like not to be so hard. Um, my thoughts on it is it's not necessarily uh, uh, respecting what they're telling me, but it's, they, they probably know what we're doing. So they probably know what's, what's the best to do. Uh, and so that's why it's because they have the experience. But then you get things like this where they should have had the experience and don't use it. Or uh, I think it would want to be like early discussion kind of from an airlines now airline. Uh, if the plane goes down, it'll tell you to lean forward, to raise itself, and that would stab your neck impact so that they don't have to pay. Uh, it's easier to pay like life insurance than it is to pay uh, a suit for getting injured on the front crash. So then you have these things where they have experience and they use it against you. I'm like the thing I would just like at least investigate for myself to do those kind of outrage, like not trust the government. You know, even though that's not the government, but it's like authority figures and just to think for myself because I got how my parents are. But it's kind of a difference between respect and obedience. They don't want to be obedient, but it's like you're respectful. Well, so the floor is here. Does anyone have any like last minute remarks? Any other thing for us before we, before we go? No, I was just my first opportunity to tell him I love him. Yeah. Very good. All right, awesome. <laughs> Thank you all for the uh, being here. <laughs>